What's up guys? Welcome back to another video of Antwell Plays. Today we are playing Distant Shores from Choices. Chapter 3 today. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I like pirates. Especially One Piece. An anime about pirates, only this different. You know what I mean. Anyway, um... We've, I know that guy... That guy with the parrot was, was gonna do something, because... I can feel it. I can feel that. I I knew that like something was off about him because, dude, he's literally the bad guy. Let's begin. You uncovered mutinous intentions among the crew. Can you save the ship while learning to be a proper pirate? Uh. <laughs> Chapter 3 Live by the Sword. Late at night, you're making your way back to Poseidon's Revenge in the port of Turberon when you stumble across a plot. Yeah, rubber. I can seize control of the vessel. The question is which of the crew will follow me? Oh my god. Robert's planning a mutiny. Mutiny. You edge forward, but the first mate is already walking, his companion shrouded in shadows. I need to warn Edward. You dash through the streets, desperate to beat Robert back to the tavern. You turn the corner and... Oof! You run directly into a stranger, he catches you instinctively. Where are you off to in such a hurry? None of your business. He tries to step back out of his grasp, but his grip tightens. Is this the thanks we get for opening up our village to ye? If there's danger, I've got a right to know. I'm wasting time here. Punch him. Punch, bribe him. Make a run for it. Let me go right now. I'll make it worth your while. You haven't made attention. You reach your pocket to take out a pouch of coins. You hand a few to, him, to the man. Is that all? I guess not. You hand him the rest of your rest of the purse, and he lets. You. Pleasure doing business with you. Back to the you search the crowd for Edward. Where is he? Alas, nowhere to be found. Maybe one of the crew knows where he is. Uh, Maggie, have you seen your pair to lose your... Your black's rats. Maggie lets her knife fly through you, you sticking it into a wooden bo board behind your ear, your head. Whoa. Another bullseye. Pay up. Even with her eye covered. The onlookers grumble grumble and dig through their pockets for coin, you pull Maggie aside. Have you seen Edward? I need to speak with him. Nah, but I'm sure he's around somewhere. Need help looking? No, it's alright. I'll manage. You keep searching, checking the back tables and hidden corners until... Edward, there you are. Mr. Williams. I need to tell you you trail off as you realize who he's sitting across from. What do you want? Robert, I didn't see you there. I have to get Edward away from him. Well, I can see I'm on my I'll just be going then. You throw your arms up as casual as possible and send Robert's tankard flying. Whoops! Blast you deaf boy! He jumps dashing in the liquid off his vest and trousers. I'm so sorry about that. Don't let us keep, keep you from getting cleaned up. Edward chuckles, but Robert eyes you suspiciously. What sort of nefarious deeds are you up to now? 
Nefarious. Nefarious. He's the one. He's one to talk. Please, Robert. He was ob love of wrongdoing, and you'll have to live with that. Very well. If your if your business is done here, boy. Robert gives you a pointed look. There's no way I'll be able to warn Edward while Robert's stuck with him like glue. I have to warn Edward alone. Take a walk with Edward to warn him about Robert's and get a moment alone with him. Well, I have to do. I have to do it. He's the captain. The moon is so bright. It would be a shame to waste waste it. Join me for a walk along the docks, Edward. I'd be delighted. Our discussion will keep until morning, Mister Sir Robert. I've heard your complaints and will consider them closely. After you, Mister Williams. Yeah, I'm not romancing him at all because one, I am. I'm not gay. I know I've said this like a bunch of times. I'm just telling you guys now that I'm not gay. I am straight. I like women. So do with it. Okay, that came out wrong. I'm sorry. As you and Edward walk toward the docks, you have a powerful feeling that you're being followed. When you peer over your shoulder, it shows Robert's soul in a ways behind you, keeping to the shadows. Jesus! Does this guy ever quit? The sea air is cool and you breathe in deeply as you watch the moonlight dance over the water. It's beautiful out here. Indeed. Somehow I doubt that's why we're here. What do you mean? Come on now, Mr. Williams. Give me the courtesy of assuming I have some wits. You were hardly subtle about your need to talk to me. You can feel the right to weight of Robert's glare as on your back. He's definitely eavesdropping, so you change the subject. So, how long have you been a gentleman of fortune? Excuse me? You dart your eyes pointedly behind you, raising your eyebrows. After a moment of confusion, Edward nods. You continue to lead him further away from the tavern. You know, pillaging and plundering, how long have you been a partner? You have an unpleasant obsession with pi and prying into the most inten intimate details of my past. Can't you blame me? It's like you'll just tell me otherwise. Only a fool offers up information for free. That's what I. That's then. What about a trade? I ask, ask you a question, then you ask me one. A trade. Ever looks amused, but you can tell tell he's taking a suggestion seriously. Right, well. Ask your question and then I'll show us mine. Hmm. What do you want most in life? I suppose I want justice. You wait for him to elaborate, but he keeps his eyes on the horizon. Just general justice. That's kind of vague. It is. It feels oppressively specific to me. I won't allow myself to have, have other, to have other more personal goals, until justice has been served. You know, I think I know you less now that, now that, when we started. It's hardly my fault you didn't ask the proper question. But it's my turn now. What pairs up, Mr. Williams? I have a given name. You know it's Anthony. I don't know you well enough to address you with such familiarity. Ask your questions and maybe you will. How did you come find yourself alone in such a situation? Have you no family? Surely a man of your charms has had the opportunity to wed and wed well. Sure I have. So you do have a wife? And she let you sail the seven seas without complaint? No, no wife. Actually... I haven't found the right person yet. When I do, I'm trying to seize the opportunity. 
Of that, I have no doubt, Mr. Williams. Ever stops walking and faces you. I have one more question, and I expect you to answer seriously. Tell me, Mr. Williams, where are you truly from? I don't know what you mean. I never met anyone with an accent like yours. You say, you say and do the oddest things, and I try as I might to make sense of it all, the tale you weave is stuff of fantasies. I must know the truth. You wouldn't believe me even if I told you, Edward. Try me. You take a deep breath. I'm from the future. Come again? I was born in the 90s, the 1990s. Huh, that's true. I was born in the 1990s too. <laughs> 1997. A couple days ago, I was auditioning for a role on a pirate ship, a uh, pirate soap opera, when I somehow sent back in time. That's how I wound, wound up on the Admiral's ship. Tell him about the compass. Exactly how much rum did Charlie sneak into your cup? I told you you wouldn't believe me. You start to turn away, but Edward puts a gentle hand on your arm to stop you. I'm, try I'm trying to. It's just too fast to, to believe. Oh, I'm just getting started. One day you won't have to sail with sudden stars. Machines that float oh, around way up in the sky can tell you exactly where on Earth you are. Doesn't this interrupt the time-space continuum or something? I don't, I don't know. Just telling him all this. Is just, and most people travel around by flying. Anyway, hardly anyone takes boats anymore. Or horses. You have a vivid imagination, Mr. Williams. I grant you that. We've been to the... We've even been to the moon. The moon? But how? We've created a new type of ship that can sail... That can sail through space. Instead of the sea, my grandma used to tell me stories about watching the first moon landing on TV. TV? Television. Like a stage play, only it gets recorded and you can play it on a box, in your living room or on, a, on your phone. My phone? You pull out of your pocket with a flourish. Haha, see? I don't know what, what to make of that black box. Is this witchcraft? Nope, it's technology. Pictures of my family dog. First pictures of my f last trip to Las Vegas. You hold you hold your phone out to Edward so you can see so he can see as you flip through photos of your family dog. This is Mojito. The bulldog. By the gods, what is he wearing? That's his little doggy life vest. This picture is from the last 4th of July. You have a life-giving vest, yet you put it on your beast? And what is so special about July the 4th? 4th of July... Forget it. A lot has happened in the last 300 years so or so. But let's just say this picture would get a lot of likes in my time. I can tell if you're drunk or mad. I can't tell if you're drunk or mad. I warned you, it's hard to believe, but it is true. I just need some time to consider everything. Ever hands your phone back to you, still shaking his head in wonder, and you slip it into your pocket. Yeah, I can understand that. Besides, that's not why I asked you out here. You glance behind you, you're far enough away, now that Robert couldn't possibly overhear your conversation. I overheard Robin, Robert talking to someone outside the taproom. He's playing against you, planning a mutiny. Everett's switching clouds as he paces away from you, his hands locked behind his back. Edward? I need your word. Promise you'll not breathe a word of this to another soul. But... Your sworn promise, Mr. Williams, or you'll need to find a different ship. You saw him not. 
I swear I won't tell anyone. Ever relaxes his expression softening and his eyes piercing into yours. Thank you for the promise that I and for the information. I suspect I will owe you my life and the crew before all is done. You're very welcome. It's late. We set sail at dawn. Let me escort you back to my ship. The two of you walk back, a comfortable silence falling between you. So he doesn't believe me or something? I don't know. Right, the next morning, the crew's cast off and the Poseidon's Revenge glides out of Tiburon's harbor on smooth, glassy waters. Where are we headed? East. Not that it's any of your business. <laughs> we wouldn't have to suffer his questions if we'd left him back in the village. Sorry, Octavia, but I'm not going anywhere. I have to get my hands on the compass, anyway. Speaking of that, why didn't you tell him about the compass? That would make s total sense. <sighs> Pay them no mind anything. We're bound to room for the trade route. The one we, the one you've been targeting. Aye, the same. Jolly approaches you. Her. Eyes glinting with anticipation. You know that what that means, love. Today's the day you become a real pirate. You think back on everything you've done in the past. Has it only been two days? It's only been one. Oh wait, never mind. It has been two days. I thought I was. I thought I was. I thought I. I thought I already was a real pirate. Perhaps you'd still need to find your place on the ship. You helped out a few different tasks today to see what you have a, have a have a feel for. Where do I start? Boatswain, gunner, sailor. You find Maggie on the quarter deck. If you want to be boatswain, you'll have to. To prove you can remember some basic knots. Knots? Maggie tosses a spear coil coil of rope to you. Then nods empathetically. Knots. I'll be teaching you three knots today. The bowline, the reef, and the clove hitch. Maggie starts twisting the rope in her hands. The bowline knot is used to make a loop at the end of it, end of a rope. Follow her instructions until. Aye, that's a mighty fine knot, Anthony. The bowline is one of the most important knots you'll learn. You use it to rescue someone who falls overboard, among other things. You nod. Bowline knot used for rescue. What's next? The reef knot. Kinda of looks like a square. You use this one to flourish sails. You knot as you attempt to tie the knot yourself. The reef knot is used to tie up this. Is good. The last one for today is the clove hitch knot. This is this one is used to wrap around railings and the like. What's it used for? You use it, you use the club hitch to secure lines along a series of... She nods to the side of the deck where many of the ropes are tied down using club hitch knots. You secure ropes to posts with the club hitch. Got it. Good, now prove it. What would you use f to flare the sails? Reef knot? Make a quick work of the rope holding up a perfect reef knot. How's this? Tis just right. And what would you use to secure the line on a, to a post? Let's see, I'd use... Hmm, 
you wrap your rope around the reel, then cross it over and wrap it again before tucking it in through. Ta-da! A perfect clove hitch knot. Aye, that's a beauty. He that. Last one. What would you use if you needed to rescue someone who fell overboard? A rescue knot has to be the bowline knot. You could get fast on the bowline knot and present it to Maggie. See? The loop at the end makes it easy for the person to grab onto. Just so. At the end of your lesson, Maggie peers down all the knots you tied. Keep this up and you'll be better than me before we know it. You follow the steps down to the gun deck where Ginny and Jonas are waiting. Those are waiting. Waiting next to a large cannon. Let me see how you take take to being a gunner. It's easy, Anthony. First you put the powder, put in the powder, then you use the rammer to wet it to what to pack it in. When that's done, you load the cannonball. Powder, what cannon. Got it. Powder. Well go on then. Powder, what cannon. You covertly load the power into a muzzle like this. Nicely done. What? Jonas watches crazy as you pick up the wet of fabric and work it into the muzzle of the cannon. I'm no expert, but this looks good to me. And me. Here's the rammer. Don't don't fuse him, girl. If he has the hang of it. Once once the wad is firmly packed down, Jonas braces his hands on his hips. Alright, boy, final step. Let's see what you got. Last but not least, Jenny claps your hands as you load the cannonball into the muzzle. If <laughs> He got all the steps right. Aye, he did. Jonas ruffles Ginny's hair. Maybe I've... Maybe I have another natural on my hands. I have to work hard to keep up with you, Ginny. You head back up to the deck. Now, what does the sailor's position do? You join Kermick up in the rigging... Clinging tightly to the ropes to support. You best be prepared to repress the lad. Today there will be no going easy on you. You were going easy on me before? Aye. When we were under full sail facing down the worst of the Royal Navy, there be no room for doubting. When the sailing master shouts an order, you, be, you need to be quick. Got it. Now, the wind is much stronger up here than on deck, especially with when you're fl unflirting the sails. You must be able to adjust your balance at a moment's notice to avoid hitting the deck. On cue, the wind's picking up and sets the rigging swaying beneath you. Match your movements to prompt as they pop up the screen. Oh, oh, I know this one. Okay, ready? I need to be ready. Forward. Right. Left. Back. Left. So, do I pass the test? Aye. You almost look like a seasoned hand. Only almost. Give me a few weeks. Give me a few weeks and we'll have yet. You have to stuff in no time. After you've tried all the positions, you meet back with the others. I see he hasn't fallen overboard yet. Pity. Give Anthony a little credit, Octavia. 
Indeed. He'd be a natural with the cannonballs. With the cannons. And I know Ginny's taken a liking to him. She's like a little sister. And they be, be a right help in the riggings. Took to the sails like a fish to water. If he has the makings of a boat, of a fine boat swing. What are you all fighting over him? What are you all fighting over him now? Jealous, Octavia. I have a feeling Octavia is going to join, uh, join Robert side. I suppose if you're that good at everything, what do you want to do, Anthony? Hmm. Sailor, boatswain. Hmm. Gunner looks easy. Jimmy will be happy to have you as part of the team. Can't wait to blow stuff up. <laughs> Soon you're dismissed from your new assignment. You wander the decks until you hear the sound of swords clashing. Oh crap, did rubber did rubber already betray the crew? You rush up the stairs into the quarter deck to find. Is that the best you've got, Scallywag? Trolley fencing with Edward. Why why do you have your shirt off, man? Watch your tongue ch tongue, Charlie, or I'll have you knee hauled. The swords flash in a bright sunlight as they exchange fierce blows in the front of the crew. Are they always like this? I You'll get used to their pres soon enough. I don't, I don't know about that, Henry. I certainly still haven't. The two sword fighters parry and dodge their way across the deck, right through the group of onlookers. Careful, you two. I'd rather avoid doing surgery today on, on you or anyone else. I hardly think, think your services will be needed, Samuel. Tiss, just a friendly, friendly sparring match, Sammy. Nothing to fret about. Charlie turns to Edward, her with a grin. Although, you're a step slow today, Captain. Up late brooding again? Awake enough to keep you on your toes. Edward darts out of the path of Charlie's sword, then spines through goes around and bring his blade dangerously close to his cheek. Oi! Charlie jumps back, breaking from form to stay out of danger. Perhaps you could stand to do a little more brooding. Charlie swishes her sword through the air in delight. Me? Never. Of course I cheer for Charlie. Are you going to let him get away with this, Charlie? I never do. <clears throat> she she winks at you before attacking Edward again with a dramatic flourish. Edward leaps out of the way way of Charlie's sword, rolling across the deck until he rises to his feet before you. Finish with your tasks already, Mr. Williams. That's right. You're looking at your newest gunner. We got work, we got our work cut out for us, but between me and Ginny, we'll whip him into shape. <laughs> Aww. Exactly. Glad to hear, hear it. If you're settled, then maybe it's time to show you how to handle yourself in a real battle. Charlie tosses her sword in your direction. Her sword? Uh... Your stage training takes over as you feel the weight of the sword in your hand. You slash the blade through the air, adjusting to the weight of the real thing. I don't want to interrupt. Oh, I don't want to interrupt. Edward studies you, you for a moment before inclining his head. You've held a sword before? Is that a question? Your observation... Just an observation. You are full of mysteries, Mr. Williams. The two of you share a knowing look 
A long, knowing look. You can't tell if he's decided to believe you yet or not. Mysterious or not. Twould be a good thing to know for sure, Anthony. Can hold his own against Navy dogs and the like. Now, Mr. Williams, would you care to try your sword against one of us? Hmm. Get a sword fighting lesson from Edward or Charlie to give your boost when battling your enemies. Why is his shirt off? Well, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that a challenge, Charlie? Always. You raise your sword, pointing at, at her face. She takes a spare sword from Jonas as it moves off, off to the side to let you sp spar. I'm God. Wait, is that even? Never mind. You take a few steps forward, Charlie, toward Charlie, your weapon flashing in the sunlight as you thrust it toward her. But she easily ducks under your, your advance, managing to clip your wrist. Your sword clatters to the deck. Hey! Guess being at the top of your stage fighting class doesn't help much when you're up against the real thing. That's right, shall I show Anthony his place? Why do you hate me? What? So, why do you hate me? <laughs> why does she hate me? Tis, tis isn't very sporting of you, Octavia. Yeah, Charlie's one of the best swords, swords men. You mean swords women on the ship? Second only to the captain. You can't even hold your own against her. You can feel Edward's amused gaze on you as Charlie picks up your sword and hands it to you. Charlie has been fighting all her life. Anthony just needs to find his footing. Focus on me, love. You're a net right natural, but your grip is a little off. Charlie steps up behind you, guiding her fingers into place on the sword's hilt. Your, your breath catches as you realize just how close the two of you are. Better? It feels odd. It'll come more s naturally once you start sparring. It is not meant to be comfortable while holding still. Now, wind your stance a bit more. You step forward, swinging your sword. Your blade slices through the air right at Charlie's shoulder height. Ha! She quickly ducks and rolls out of the way, springing up next to you with her sword at your throat. Bold attempt. I like it. Anthony must have some training, even if Charlie still bets him. <laughs> I'll be impressed if I, if I know how he, what he, no. I'll be impressed when I know what he can do with a knife. Not everyone can be a cook, Henry. <laughs> you try to tune out the onlookers, keeping your attention on Charlie. The much more... That much momentum leaves you exposed if your opponent is quick on his, on her feet. You must keep yourself protected at all times. She passed your cheek, then steps back into, f into a fighting stance. Again, drawing launches into a series of attacks since you mostly trained in how to make this stuff look good. You struggle a bit, but you manage to hold your own. Where did you learn to fight like this? Master in desert country, fighting on the streets, your mom. Just picked it up here and there. You're starting to sound as evasive as our good captain here. Impress your advantage as she talks steel, steel ring against steel. Charlie smiles as she 
blocks one of your more brutal attacks. Starting to fight like him too. I'll take it. I'll take that as a compliment. You circle one another, steel clashing as you carefully study her attacks. Encounters fi finally. You spot a hole in her defense. Aha! A trickle, a sweet sweat runs down the middle of your back as you lunge. But the trap try tips your sword away and closes the distance between you, her blade held high, lightly against the side of your neck. Oh, she's so close you can feel her body press against yours. Surrender? <laughs> Lean closer to fight. Getting closer, the fight forgotten. Charlie? She leans in close, closing the gap between you. Your eyes flutter close to when... Now he's bewitching our quartermaster, too? Hush, Octavia. And for God's sake, turn around and give him some privacy. You step back as the sound of the crew's chatter breaks the spell. Whoops. Fuck out, we had an audience for a second. Next time, love. <laughs> oh, sorry. You flush as Charlie winks at you behind her. You see Edward step forward and face the crew. Don't you all have work to do? Hi, Captain. Come on, you layabouts. I think I need a break, Edward. As Edward steps forward again, you try to offer your sword back to Charlie. Keep the cutlass, since you know how to use it. Aye, you did well, Mr. Williams. Admiral Coltrane will, will think twice before threatening your life again. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. Thanks. You lean against the railing as Charlie and Edward resume their sparring. A piece of whistle cuts across the clang of the swords. Sail ho! Charlie and Edward break apart. Or instantly, Charlie scrambles up to the ring and leans preciously out over the ocean as Edward strides to the helm. Tis a man of war. Isn't that a really big ship with a literal boatload of guns? Ever those those his shirt throws on his shirt and coat, pulling out his spyglass and peer at the approaching ship. Bloody. She's flying the Admiral's colors. You're closing you're close enough to see him tense his jaw tightening. He hands you the spyglass so you can see for yourself. Put the spyglass to your eye. Wait a second. Is that a storm? You remove the spyglass, but the sky is clear. The ocean there and blew all the way out, out to the horizon. I could have sworn. Is the spyglass again? Okay, that makes more sense. Did I just look through time? Does that mean a storm is... All hands to stations. Ready the cannons. Emma shouts, shouts pull, pull you back from your thoughts. And back to the to the real and present danger of the Admiral's ship on the horizon. What are you doing? Rack? What are you doing? What are you doing? Rack? <laughs> <laughs> Robert emerges from his cabin, eyes blazing. He storms over the helm, squaring, squaring off against Edward. We need to come about to make now and make full sail. If we move quick, we can still escape. Escape? Tis the moment we've been waiting for, Robert. We'll def we will defeat the Admiral this time. I'm sure of it. Not with a new, untested crew member aboard. It's foolishness. Robert turns to Kendrick and when ready to give an order, but Edward cuts him off. No, we move to intercept and fight. But that's suicide. I'm sorry, Ever, but Robert has a point. The besides, Revenge is no match for a man of war. 
Even I know that. Finally, the boy starts to make some sense. Enough! I'm the captain of this ship, of this vessel, Robert. And you never let us forget it. Follow my commands or get off my ship. I have a better idea. Robert brings his sword at Edward. No. It's time we found this ship a new captain. Who's with me? Now he decides to do it. Okay. So he decides now would be a good time to... Well, we'll find the rest out next... Out in two weeks, because, again, next week, next Friday, I have work. Yeah, I'm sorry, but it's true. But anyway, I have... Anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. If you want to get notified of all the videos I put up on my channel, hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video.